Welcome back to Disco, guys. So, last time, kind of a mixed feeling. Oh, gosh. Kind of a mixed feelings kind of episode. Um, we learned a lot of interesting things from, from Sona, who's the radio computer programmer, worker, scientist, I guess, who's investigating this anomaly that's in the church. This nowhere anomaly, this nowhere zone, this point of nothingness that exists in the church. She's investigating that. And she doesn't want to leave, really, and she's fair enough. She's investigating something incredibly interesting and pertinent. And um, we found out that the that the lads in the tent, they really just they wanted to set up uh, somewhere to, to make drugs, to, to make speed. And then they kind of tried to convince us that, that they just wanted to do that to get enough money to get the club off the ground. I mean, I don't know. And I, I don't know how if I regret it or not. Because if, if if we would have ended up seeing this place turned into a nightclub, that might have been good for the area, right? It might have been a place that could have generated business for Martinez. But at the same time, I really didn't want to be conned. They'd already lied to us once, but I guess they couldn't really tell the truth to a police officer. So I don't know if I took the boring choice. Um, but it was the choice I felt like making. And that's ultimately what this, you know, what sharing your experience in a game like this is about. Um, I didn't want to get. I didn't want them to say that that's what they were going to do, and then just to do the drug stuff anyway, or to try and do it secretly or something. Um, so they've gone. So I don't feel great about them leaving. Maybe I missed out on some extra quest stuff. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm the least disco <laughs> like outfit that I've had for this playthrough. It's too hot. I can't put all those layers on. Um, I suspect that some sort of serendipitous way I might get punished for that with the dice rolls for wearing a t-shirt <laughs> but um, I'm just going to go talk to Sona and tell her that um, it's not going to be turned, in, turned into a nightclub which I don't know I'm just like I said guys when someone told me I was playing the game too straight was the word and I was just like oh great I'll, I'll play the game how I want you know um, but then it makes you second guess yourself Yes, what is it? Um, those ravers won't, ravers won't be bothering you anymore. I told them to leave because they were planning a drug trade. You told them to leave? They didn't think the cops in this place had it in them. She looks up, surprised. She murmurs. About that hole again. The swallow, you mean? What about it? Never mind. Great. Thanks. Okay. Um, I guess that's pretty much going to do it for this side of Martinez. Um, I haven't... We haven't found any, uh, like, snipers' nests, bullet bullet traces, gunpowder traces, whatever we were looking for. Um, there's obviously still the signatures that we need to get for Everard. But I feel like we need to just resolve everything with the Hardys and Clashy. So, um, we're going to run back to the wheel in rags, try and get a bit of shut eye. Obviously, talk to the old limbic, talk to the triune brain again. And uh, tackle things in the morning. Uh, in terms of stuff we've not done here, we do have the, these chaps over here, these three fellas. Who we could have a little chat with now. Oh, it's 2am, everyone's gone to bed. Where the hell are you going, guys? Yeah, so I guess that's our cue to go to bed as well. Now we've been in there. Just thinking if there's anywhere we've not really been. No, I don't think so. Got enough money to stay the night, unfortunately. It's, it just feels like we're spending all our money on that, you know? I don't think there's much... We do have an incentive for, for resting, right? We get to talk to our messed up brain. Um, we didn't need to talk to Roy for anything else, did we? Could we steal from Sealing? No. <laughs> okay, so let's just have a little look over the quests. Hidden quests, obviously. So we we do have a way to sing karaoke now because we've got the tape. Um, pissing match between Precinct 41. Ask him about this after the initial inspection of the dead body is done. God. It's taken a while. Find a way into the city. There are strange doors in the whirling. No one knows where they lead. Find a way in and see what's hidden there. 
in the hostel cafeteria's forgotten corners. So there's a, the door at the, on the top in Clashy's apartment uh, on the on the balcony, and then there's the one in the kitchen. I have no idea how to open the one in the kitchen, but the one on the balcony is a physical instrument check, which we're never going to hit without like every item of clothing buffing it. Uh, the pants from Kuno, we're never. I don't feel like we're never going to get because it costs 15 real, and we need that money to spend to, to sleep at night. Uh, the armor pieces. Oh, one of you told me to put them on, but exit the menu because we'll get a thought from it. Um, I, I guess I, I don't think that's a spoiler. I've already put it on anyway. It's just a case of um, you know exiting the menu. You need to send the body for processing. Ask the scab leader yeah, about the tattoos. Find the gloves. The gloves of the hanged man armor might still be around in the neighborhood. Try to locate them. Ask the little girl in the fishing village down the coast who knows something about the armor. Because the little girl? What little girl? Maybe during the day. Yeah, the little girl. Yeah, because they'll have gone to bed. Um, Maybe yeah, we need to have a wash. Find the murder weapon. Yeah, we're not really onto any leads for that. We need to get the signatures for Everard, but I don't think I'll do that. Well, I will. I'll investigate. Um... Who did we need? Isabel and Lillian. We've met Lillian, right? I can't. don't know if, if we've met Isabel. Yeah, we need to get that from Titus. We've got nothing on the bullet traces. We need to call the station and the, and the library. Uh, we need to talk to Morel and Lena in the morning. Perfect. I don't know why they needed to put fast travel in. Um, we'll, we'll bring the station in the morning. The Hardy Boys are here now. It means we've locked them like into the quest, doesn't it? That'd be funny if it is. No, but you're still here. Hi again, gendarme. Oh, bye bye, gendarme. Bye bye. Right, hang on. Um, don't need the torch. This hat is take oh, it's plus two to logic though. I don't like the losing one off perception though. I don't. Um, we're getting a big bonus on logic anyway, right? Yeah, plus three. So. Um. I don't like losing a suggestion. We need another. We need a new hat, basically. Yeah, because. Um, I'll put the armor pieces on in my room so that Kimmy doesn't see me. <laughs> uh, we need a different shirt. I like the drama shirt. Uh, pants. Yeah, composure's good. Empathy's good. Interfacing's good. Inland Empire, good. Savo Affairs, good. I don't doubt visual calculus we can boost if we need. Yeah, that's that's about right. Boosting lots of, of psych. Um, and sav and Savo Affair, interfacing, composure, perfect. Um... I just need a new hat. Uh, are you going to let me sing karaoke, dude? Can I help you? God, I'd like to sing some karaoke, mate. No, you don't. It's not happening. Come on. He tries not to look at you. It's dangerous to acknowledge the karaoke man. Yeah, but look him in the eye. Johnny Law is about to tear it up, sad style. Why do you even have a PA system if no one's going to use it? It's part of my quest of self-discovery. <laughs> Help me. This is my way of apologizing for the trouble I've caused. Please let me say I'm sorry. You're right. It's not the time yet. I don't think... I, this guy's kind of just interested in running his business. I don't think he's really interested in whether we feel sorry or not. So while this would seem quite sincere, I don't think that's... going to appeal to a sourpuss like Gart. Uh, why do you even have the PA system if no one's using it? It's for the... It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. What happened? A lot of people got killed because what? some arsehole wanted to sing karaoke. <laughs> it's not a prop, it's for your clients. Okay, yes, it's for some clients. He admits reluctantly. I'm a real client. I've paid my bills and I have the right to use the karaoke machine. Ha! Well, we don't have any tapes. They all got stolen. 
It's all right. I've got my own song with me. Give him the tape for the smallest church in Saint-Saint. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He begins to frown. Hard. This is the look of a man who's defeated. He knows he's out of excuses. <laughs> yes. Fine, fine. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. I'll plug it in for you. Damn this karaoke machine. Oh, yes. I'm having it uninstalled, he mumbles to himself. Oh, yeah. Time to do the damage. Now let's pay our bill. Got the 20 real? Yep. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember... Yeah, Take yeah. it easy on him. Deep down, he really hates being the guy who has to remind you. Okay. <gasps> Guys. Guys. <laughs> the stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy. Oh. A little unsteady suddenly. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. Hang on, let's get our drama boosts up. Let's get our, um, let's get our silk robe on. Uh, this is logic, isn't it? Not composure. Oh, we might need composure. Drama, drama. Uh, did we have one more drama boost? Oh, we need to put the point into drama for Clashy. So I might as well save that in case this check needs to be reopened, right? Oh, sorry, necktie. We look ridiculous. <laughs> Minus one sulfur fur, no. Electric chem, no. Need some better pants, dude. Yeah, let's keep the composure pants. Let's get rid of these gloves for a second. Half light or electrochem. That's fight or flight, right? So. Oh, yeah, it's freed up the sleeves. I dig it. The glasses were drama. No, Savo Fair. I think we're ready, guys. We look horrendous. We'll keep the ledger out. Um, the stage uh, is all set up for your performance. Oh, are you Feels ready? Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak if, under your feet. If I have to sing, guys, I'll, I apologize. I have the worst singing voice of all time. Because obviously, there's no voice for Harrier. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady suddenly. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. Ah, oh, the dress code. All right. Kimmy, I'm going to sing. I can see that. <laughs> the tenant steps away from the stage, ready for your performance. Let's test the microphone out. Testing. Immediately, a loud feedback noise startles the room. You feel like an amateur. How are you supposed to hold the mic? Should you just sing into it? Where should you stand? Oh dear. I don't know if any of you guys have ever been on stage doing stuff, um, but I don't know. There's nothing quite like it, really. Hands. Where do you put your hands? Damn it. This is all making me more nervous, isn't it? The dining hall has cleared up of customers for tonight. Even the kitchen is closed, and someone has turned down the lights. Maybe it's a good idea to do it in the dark like this, almost after closing hours. No, I think we should maybe do it when it's... We should have a crowd, right, and the lights on. Oh... The air is thick with anticipation. Let's do it. The tape clicks into the carousel, and then the music starts. I wonder if they've recorded something for this.
I would often go there. To the tiny church there. The smallest church in San San. Though it once was larger. How the real may rest there. I should have done this when there were people here, dude. Down through the mist there. Toward the Seven Sisters. Toward those pale cliffs there. I would often stay there. In that tiny yard there. I have been so glad here. Looking forward to the past here. But now... You are all alone. None of this matters. Now, none of this matters. At all. Lovely Harrier. All right, let's 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 read it as prose for a second, because I was just enjoying the music a bit. Then I would often go there to the tiny church there, the smallest church in San San. Though it was once, though it once was larger, how the real may rest there, down through the mist there, toward the seven sisters, toward those pale cliffs there. I would often stay there in the tiny yard there. I've been so glad here, looking forward to the past here. But now you are alone. None of this matters at all. Thank you. Well <laughs> a rather lonely applause echoes through the most empty mostly empty cafeteria it's gar not bad he tells you with an approving nod yes not bad at all the lieutenant joins in you feel your hands shake as awareness of your body returns to you thank you ancient a reptilian brain thank you i don't need big crowds i just need my friends life is a fucking joke Thanks for bearing with me. I'm going to get back to work now. Thanks. I don't need big crowds. I just need my friends. Like you, Kimmy. Okay, yes. I'm going to unplug the microphone so you can get off the stage now. All right. Can we do that again? I'd like to be able to come and try again when there's people here. Ah, smallest church in Saint-Saëns, right? Cafeteria manager is waiting for you to acknowledge that he recognised the song. Yeah, the church is actually my past. Yeah, the church is actually my life. Yeah, the church is actually my love. Things are really bad with it. I fucking rock that shit. Um. Yeah, the church is actually my past. Cool. Now, what can I do for you? Thanks, Gart. I appreciate it. Oh, we picked up another skill point. Um, uh, yeah, this drama check's still, still down. So we'll pop a skill point into that, into drama, to unlock it. Um, what else do I want to put? I'm just going to spend the point. Um, we've got empathy quite high. Savoir faire and compo Savoir faire, composure suggestion are what I'm in, I think I'd like to keep up. I've not really seen any benefit from Savoir faire, so but I think because it's been quite low. So I think I'm going to stick the other point in um, Savoir faire. And I need to do the armor, but like I said, I'll do that in my room when Kimmy's gone. Boom. 
Right, bedtime, Kimmy. Don't say goodnight to me in this silk robe. Who knows what might happen. <laughs> I hope nothing's going to happen to Clashy overnight. But I don't know, she doesn't seem like... She seems like, you know, she's resigned to misery, but she doesn't seem depressed. Do you know what I mean? See you in the morning, Kimbo. Have a nice sleep. Can we, uh... What was the mirror check again? What was it for? Right, first things first. Uh, let's stick the armor on. You look down at the white ceramic sabatons hugging your arches and calves, surprised at how well they fit. Hmm. Your movements cause tiny little clicks, like dice rolling somewhere far away as the plates reorient to your motions. I'll be responsible with, with this. It's just to protect me from harm, not to show off. The hardened, vitreous enamel, at once sleek and light, adds a glow to your cheeks and a spring to your step. Just imagine what a full suit of this stuff could do for you. You sound like authority, dude. You really do feel more confident. Invulnerability does that. Mm. Even partial invulnerability. Yeah, I could probably sell it. Um, definitely just prefer having a decent outfit, not with this silk robe, I understand that, but, uh, you know. I know, I don't even know. No, I, I'm, that's a total lie. Um, I just want an outfit that boosts my psych stuff, basically, with a, you know. Yeah, one, one down, two pieces to go. Two? Are you sure you're correct there? There was a helmet, too. Three pieces more like you were ambitious. I don't think this is acknowledging the fact that I've got the cura cuirass, right? It may be a while before you have all the pieces. In the meantime, you should analyze the armor. Hmm. Figure out its vulnerabilities. Such as? Remember, this is a highly specialized kinetic redistributor meant to stop bullets. Wear it. Observe its properties. See if there's a weakness in the design. Maybe that'll benefit us for dealing with the other two Cronel operatives. For the day you have to fight someone covered in the same material. Yes! Don't know why I just did gun fingers. The game is influencing me. Uh, do I have to wear it? It really hurts to punch this armor. A sword wouldn't leave, wouldn't leave even a scratch. A bullet would bounce right off. Still... There must be some flaw in it that would allow you to stand your ground against this dangerous enemy technology. You just have to figure out what it is, possibly by beating yourself by wearing it, shooting yourself. <laughs> Let's see. Well, we don't have a free slot for the time being. So I've got to stick me empathy shoes back on. Where am I? Oh, there they are. Uh, drama vest. Composure jacket um, and the horrific necktie. I know our drama's not as high, but I'll put it back on when we talk to Clashy. Perfect. Right. Um, I don't know if we can. We need to have a wash, right? This is not the cleanest bathtub in the world, but it's cleaner than you are right now. We're going to have to pass like a physical instrument check or hand-eye coordination just to wash ourselves. Oh, that soap scum smell. It smells like life, at least compared to you. I want to live forever with the corpse smell, memento mori and stuff. No, let's have, a, let's have a bath. The bathtub slowly fills with water. The water beckons. Undress, close your eyes and submerge. The water doesn't feel particularly clean. A few beer cans are bobbing up and down along your flanks like sad duckies <laughs> you pause to think before letting your head go under why wouldn't you just have a shower hold it right there keep your head above water or you'll lose all those pheromones morel sprayed on you okay the lukewarm water is comforting like amniotic fluid you feel nice and lonely 
and so, so tired. I take the beer cans out. Now you are alone with your thoughts in the tub. But it's easier than being alone with your thoughts outside the tub. Let's imagine something. You see the corpse. You can still smell the cadaver on you. It's going to take more than one bath to get rid of that stench. Then, houses along a narrow street. A video rental. Darkness on the planet's curvature. Let's linger. Your fingers grow pale and are covered with tiny whirls as the water cools. Nice and clean, let's get out. The water line recedes as you stand. You are cold now. Your clothes stick to your still moist skin. I feel like this was a phys physical check or a half-life or shivers, electrochemistry. Wall. It's barely covered in steam anymore. It's your face in the mirror. But we do have, we've got like one or two electrochem boosts. Are we losing any electrochem? No. We might as well give it a try. Uh, the gloves were electrochemistry, right? Uh, the original pants were electrochemistry. Oh, those pants were as well. Uh, were the were the shades electrochem? No, sapphire. Oh, oh, oh. That's as good as it's going to get then, without putting a point in. So that's giving a plus three to electrochemistry. It was at like 17%. That should make it at least a 50-50. The mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in steam anymore. It's your Excuse face me. in the mirror, adorned with the expression. How is it still only 17%? It's at a four. The mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in steam anymore. It's that your should face be an eight. Adorned with no the origin, the no more steam. That's rubbish. That is absolute rubbish. Isn't that nonsense, guys? Ah. <sighs> Uh, I'm just going to leave the zone quickly. You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray. Light it up and smoke the living shit out of it. Oh, electrochemistry, leave me alone. <laughs> oh, am I a smoker? Who knows what you are? A monster, a murderer, the gnome of Jeroma. You feel like a smoker. Especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, seductive cigarette stub still smouldering deliciously. She broke it at the filter. I can't smoke that. How very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette. Yeah. Or better yet, an entire pack. Strike that. A carton. Make sure they're all healthy and able-bodied. Then smoke them all. All right. The idea seems to make your neck expand. Suddenly, the garish tie feels very snug. Or you could not do that. No one is making you. Um, I'll think about it. Good. Thinking about yummy cigarettes in your mouth is the next best thing. Make sure you think about juicy sticks of tobacco all the time, though. It doesn't count if it's not all the time. And when you're done thinking about them, graduate to getting them. All right, buddy, calm down. Plus, 
Smoking then gives massive bonuses. Yes. I'm sure it does. Alright, let's just exit and enter just to see if that refreshes the mirror check. Because that, that, it was on a 17% without those boosts. I put the boosts on. Electrochemistry went up to 4 instead of 1. So it should have gone up to 7 or 8, right? Unless it's purely to do with my face. Come on, dude. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. Oh, that's... It's barely covered in steam anymore. That's so rubbish. It's your face in the mirror, adorned with the expression. This is going to hurt us if we don't get it, but it's a white check, so I'm just going to do it. I mean, how many 83s have we missed? This is the opposite, right? 83 chance to miss. So come on. With my luck, we should hit this. Still not happening. It won't come off that easy. Yeah, leave me alone. <laughs> right, electrochemistry, you had your chance. Um... You had your chance. I'm going back to the hideous outfit. Thank you very much. Um, there we go. Right. Find some smokes. Uh, find a pack, put it in your hand. And smoke it. Yeah. I don't think we found any cigarettes. No, we found booze, but... And uh, this was a visual calculus check, right? The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blow. Now we've already, do already done it, apparently. Right, time to hit the hay. The bed is still cold from the broken window, and not too inviting. But it's yours. You've earned it. Let's do it. Nightmares, please. At least we know that it's the voice... It's not easy, but your bones are so tired from what feel like weeks of work on the case. You have to try. After what feels like hours, you feel you might be sleeping. Um, at least we know that that is our voice, that the voice of the reptilian brain, I guess, is our actual voice. <laughs> Thoughts, baby. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. Recorded in you forever on Ferrate. Spinning in eternity. On and on it goes for untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Rising. Rising. Above the dark curvature. The great wingspan of sleep. Studded with stars. Behold. There are millions of them down there. The first time. The last time. The smoke in her mouth, the plotted flowers, the faces turning, changing. What is it? It's the world, Harry boy, and you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. kind of it's just reminding me you know what if you remember what i was saying about the metaphor of like being a blank sculpture instead of a blank canvas uh, the way you can't go back to the previous state you can never forget this shit the rain the snow i don't want to it's beautiful the colors the voices all stuck on loop whirling spitting out words and images you're the son of the world again, Harrister, a ceaseless agent, 
picking up litter and old newspapers, collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Meaningless, meaningless keepsakes. Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. What if I want to be the agent of nothing? It's too late. You're not made of nothing anymore. You're something now, Harry. I tried to drown you in the black water, but you re-emerged. Kicking and screaming. Running. And for what? Okay. Sounds like he's surprised that we're doing as well as we are. For the money, baby. <laughs> for the greater good. For Revacol. Always and only Revacol. No thanks. Solving your little crossword puzzles. Doing your tasks. Crossing names off lists. Trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. I can't give up. Um, I'm just looking out for my economic self-interest. So we have to make a choice between the thoughts. So I'm obviously going to go with empathy here just because that's our main skill. That's what I feel like I'm, I'm enjoying it showing up because it just, I think it humanizes all the people that we talk to a lot more. Do you know what I mean? So that people aren't caricatured as much. I feel like it, it just reveals a, a touch behind the eyes for us more than we can infer by ourselves. I mean, we could infer these things by ourselves, but there's going to be some details we're not going to pick up on. Uh, Sav Affair, obviously I like Sav Affair, kind of being a bit slick and cool, but I'll stick with empathy. We're making progress, measured steady progress. We're making progress, yeah. There he goes again. There he goes again. He's a real political animal, our Harry. He still doesn't see that it's the world that's changing him. He's got no idea what he's in for. Why? Cause only love can break your heart. Let's feel the pillow. Beep, beep, beep. The alarm is ringing, Harry. The disco circus goes on and on. You barely slept three hours last night. You can do it. It's nothing. Do it for the city. Go. Thank you, Volition. Oh, we got a thought there. Hello? Oh. Good. You're up. Listen. There's something that's been bothering you for a few days now. Yes, what is it? It's a suspicion, or a feeling, really, that things are not quite in hand around here. Yeah? Every day, things seem to spin more and more wildly out of control. The center isn't holding. And despite your efforts to moderate and contain these energies, things only seem to be getting worse. Wait, I thought things were going pretty well. Let's get right to it. What needs to be done? You've got to find out who bears la responsabilité. What exactly is la responsabilité? The most awesome, terrible thing. Yeah. It's, yeah. It is human nature to crave la responsabilité and to deny it. That's mm. why it must be distributed across many different organizations, agencies, offices, and portfolios. I thought I was assigning responsibility for the murder. Harry, Harry, you're thinking about this too narrowly. Okay. The situation overall. La responsabilité isn't concerned with trivial questions like who killed who. It's about the real issues, the human welfare index, the price of staple goods, the transition to real democracy. All right, give it to me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
This isn't some kind of dictatorship. You can simply seize la responsabilité for yourself. It must be given by legitimate authority. Okay. Like a committee. Do we really have time for all this? And who should sit on this committee? Sounds like too much responsibility for me. I don't want it. So who's going to be on this committee? Only the most even-keeled minds in Martinez. Your half-brother, the lieutenant, is a natural place to start. Okay. Together, you'll be able to discover who has la responsabilité in Rivershaw. And, if necessary, you'll have the wisdom and expertise to assign it among yourselves. And what happens once we've assigned responsibility? Most likely, your findings will be collected in a report which will be carefully reviewed by your superiors. Once they've reviewed it, those same superiors will produce a set of recommendations to be taken up at the next meeting of the Standing Committee. Rest assured, no matter what happens, it will be done through the proper channels. Okay, I'm prepared to take on this burden. Good luck. Your report is eagerly anticipated. So that's not a thought. We've gained a quest. Things down here are a mess. Someone really ought to do something about it. First, though, you and some other moralists should probably form a committee to decide whose job it is. Form a committee of moralists to assign responsibility. Kim might know where to start. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. All right, Kimmy. Oh, Kimmy's going to be downstairs. Um, I'll wait for Kimmy before we talk to Clash. You probably talk to Titus first because it's about Ruby. I hope that doesn't affect the drama, the availability of the drama chat with Clashy. But... Everyone's back. Hey, Morel. Hey there, Kim. Yes. Oh, is that his assistant? I didn't realise he had white hair. Kimmy, we need to talk about responsibility. Ah, I'm glad to hear it, Detective. I was wondering when we'd get to this very subject. Um, what? If you ask me, <laughs> it's high time for you to set aside these frivolous side tasks and focus 100% of your energies on the case before us. No, no, I meant like la responsibility. You know, the kind that gets assigned. Why are you pronouncing it like that gentleman from the Institute of Price Stability? You know what? Forget it. What specifically are you trying to assign responsibility for? For the whole situation. Ah, now I understand. The Lieutenant Nazi said gravely. Next, I suppose you're going to tell me you need to form a committee to assign this responsibility? Yes. Fascinating. And here I believed your recent turn toward moralism was just an act. In any event, I am just a humble law official. I may work under the moral intern's umbrella, but I'm certainly not qualified to serve on any committee. Fine. You know who might be, though? That Mr. Villedroin. The gentleman you met in the young man's apartment. Oh, no! If I were trying to get in touch with the coalition, I would start by seeking him out. But first, you might need to speak with his young companion. Now, was there anything else? No. Oh, man. Right, uh, I am going to talk to Morel and Lena, but I feel like the pressing issue is the hard... Oh, it doesn't really matter. They're all here. They're all here. We've got time. Um, let's talk to these people. Uh, Morel. It's great to see you again, officer. My wife can't wait to thank you. Go on, talk to her. Oh, sure. Lena. Oh, sweetie, I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. Um, just doing my job, ma'am. No, um... It was a truly epic long-distance trek. It, it was just on my way while I was working the case. I'm basically also a cryptozoologist now. It was an epic journey, Lena. Truly a lot of legwork. My partner adores these kinds of things. The lieutenant's still catching his breath. You've just had a full night's rest, Kimmy. 
Here, I want to give you a small token of my gratitude. It's a tie. Okay. Mask in origin. The pin is an antique. Quite special. Uh, she hands you a thin ribbon held together by a silver bird skull. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels warm in your hand. It's in the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. Interesting. You never told me you've seen the phasmid. Oh, you don't want to hear about some old woman's ramblings. Yes, I do. Ramblings? Nonsense. Your description of the phasmid is the most precise I've ever heard. But darling, I didn't even get the size of it right. You were a child, my dear. Really. It's extraordinary what you were able to describe. Now go on. Tell our friend about it. He's proven his interest in the field. That is a way, way bigger compliment than it sounds like. Reflexively, the lieutenant read his, his familiar notebook. Well, it was summer. I was building a racing track out of sand on the beach near a tall stand of reeds. Quite a tall one. Many times my height, I remember. When, all of a sudden... Wait. Uh, what happened? Um, this is an extra detail, so... Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. I was five and a half in Betancourt in the suburbs. My grandmother had a summer home there. She'd just started forming memories. Real memories. Not the billowy haze of infanthood. What happened? The strangest moment of my life. I looked up and one of the reeds moved. Not like a plant, but like a living thing. It stood up and looked at me. Its body unfolded like some antique toy. I've never seen anything like it. I didn't know this can happen, so I reached my arm and touched the thing. It felt just like a stalk of reed, but it moved, swaying, towering above me. After a while, 20 seconds, a minute maybe, it left, went into the reeds. It's an alien. Right, uh, she looks at you. Did you follow it? I tried, but I was only a child. There was mud and high water. I couldn't see it anymore. I was just standing there, knee-deep in mud, looking around me. Where did you go? Don't go. Then what? I ran back home to my grandmother and asked her if reeds could walk and told her they were looking at me. <laughs> of course, she just laughed at me, but I mm. knew what I'd seen. For years, it was a story I told at parties when I wanted to impress boys, <laughs> that sort of thing. Of course, most people just took it as a strange, amusing anecdote. So did I, honestly. But then I met Morel. We were on a date. Can you imagine? She tells me a story, and it's the most detailed report of the Insulindian phasmid I've ever heard. The sounds. She told me it kissed. So that's how they met. This is beyond significant for them. It did, yes. Like reeds in a gust of wind. The way it moved, the colour. How some of its limbs were white, like marble. It matched perfectly with what I know from other accounts. It was amazing. If it weren't for Lena, I might have given up hope years ago. It's no exaggeration to say that she restored my faith in my profession. He looks at her with admiration, forgetting a wide smile on his face. Uh, I don't want to ask if she imagined it. His limbs are white. Not all of them. There is some white coloration reported along with beige, where the camouflage ends. And how big was it? It's hard to say how big things are when you're quite small yourself. To me, it seemed to be taller than I was then, but that's probably not the case. Um, so you were on a date? Our first, yes. The old woman looks at her husband tenderly. The glance is tender, yes, but tempered by something else. A thought she can't express, even to him. 
interesting. I don't really know if I want to ask him because he's just going to kind of. I don't I hope he's not going to be too cynical, Kimmy. I thought it was a wonderful story, man. Good, good, good. He closes his notes and gives her a simple smile. But I don't believe it. A child left unattended on a warm day. Children make up stories and then end up believing them. Ah, oh, whatever. It brought them together at least, right? Kind of like... Uh, no, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Thank you for sharing this with me. You're welcome, sweetie. I do appreciate the chance to relive it whenever I get one. It was just... Such an impossibly sunshiny day. So warm. And she could get up a walk right into the reeds on her own. Into the mud. Anywhere. Get up and walk, yeah. Was she able to walk at that point in her life? I can't remember what she said about her condition. It was so long ago that we first spoke to her, right? That was like in the first or second episode. You got any more information about the cryptids? You know, to hell with it. Let's have more cryptids. <laughs> of course, officers. Is there a particular cryptid you two are interested in learning about? Is this bird a cryptid on the tie? No. It's the cryptid. The cryptid? Oh, yes. A small silvery skull shines between your fingers, its beak sharp. Okay, what is this bird? The eight eyed Teratorn, the largest flying avian ever discovered, with a wingspan of 11.5 meters. It was thought to have gone extinct 3,500 years ago. Some even doubted the fossils were real. A mutation, they said. Until... You didn't have to give me that. Mutation? <laughs> All of evolution is a mutation. Very true. Until... Until it was sighted by renowned Gottwaldian explorer and naturalist Uwe Plattenkalk in 21. Yeah, tell me about the sighting. It happened on a botanical expedition into the vast and unexplored Wambrau Canyon in southeast Ilmara. Dr. Plattenkalk got separated from his group during a sandstorm. And the Umro is... The world's largest canyon system, sweetie. It's a barren waste east of the Erg Desert. An ancient riverbed completely dried up. What happened? Alone in the blasted desert heat, the doctor wandered eastward where man hasn't stepped foot in over a thousand years since the fall of Pericarnassus. He was lost without any navigation equipment and desperately low on water. After a day or two, he noticed a bird high in the noon sky. A great black bird, it seemed gargantuan. Every now and then, the bird would dive down to feed on an animal carcass somewhere on the horizon but by the time Uva got there, the Teratorn had taken off already, and the carcass was picked clean. This happened many times. So he was following it? Yes, or rather, hunting. A bird that big has a lot of blood in it, and he was dying of thirst. For many days, Dr. Plottenkalt followed the Teratorn until they reached a great canyon wall, where the bird finally landed to rest. Professor climbed up there with a rock in his hand. He found the bird sleeping with his head tucked under its wing, a great black pile of feathers on the perch. So he approached, slowly squeezing the rock in his fist. Watch out. Then the Teratorn suddenly looked at him. He could see it had eight eyes, four on either side of its skull, like a spider. And the man couldn't move. He was paralyzed, frozen into place with the rock in his hand. Whatever he did, he could not get closer to the bird. Why? Where's uh, half light? The bird was controlling his mind. It kept him from approaching. He could step back. Every time he stepped forward, paralysis. Uva spent three days trying until the bird flew away. 
Hold on, how did he survive? The ape at Teratorn was indifferent to him, as long as he didn't get closer than two steps. It even let him feed on some carcasses up there, and the two unfertilized eggs it left behind. Interesting. An AI'd my controlling bird. Fuck yes. An AI'd my controlling bird. Come on. An AI'd my controlling bird. No way. Yeah, fuck yes. Absolutely, sweetie. Cryptozoologists have been tracing it ever since, but Wamrao is vast, mysterious, and holds many secrets. I mean, the obvious suggestion here, I think, is uh, how dehydration, severe dehydration can lead to hallucinations, right? But Modern radar telemetry shows great promise. We will confirm this one by the end of the decade, latest. This one I liked. Not only does it have eight eyes and is a living fossil and the largest bird ever to live, it also does mind control. So that was the last anyone saw of it. Sadly, yes. But there are numerous reports of eight-eyed bird skulls from Il Mara. And then there's the striking resemblance to the Periconassian Imperial Eagle, an ancient heraldic symbol that is hard to pass off as coincidence. The Imperial Eagle, too, had eight eyes. Very, very hard. This one's very famous. Everyone knows it. People will be looking at that tie on you and thinking, that man is into cryptids. <laughs> so, what else do you want to know? Um, I'll ask you about these later. I just want to talk to Morel about the traps. Of course, dear. Uh, let's have a look at this. A slender bolo tie held together by an antique clasp in the shape of a bird skull. The skull features eight cavities for eyes. It's disturbing, but you can't look away. Plus one to Inland Empire, Octopal Vision. Plus one to Volition, Cryptid's Protection. I hadn't even read the explanations for the boosts. Like a fool. I've not even read some of the clothing descriptions, have I? Uh, it just means we have to replace the horrific necktie, but it, this gives us a boost to Inland Empire, right? Will we not get the void? Can you, one of you guys maybe tell me if we unequip the t uh, the horrific necktie, will we not get interactions with it anymore, or will we still get interactions with it? You know, because it's had some, you know, important dialogue. And we're getting more volition, so... Always a bonus. Right, Morel. Ha <laughs> Nothing like the gratitude of a good woman. Now then, what can I do for you? He gives you a gruff pat on the shoulder. He tries to play it cool, remain professorial. But inside, this man is itching for some news on those traps. Checked all the traps, Morel. Good. Okay. And? And one of them was empty. Completely empty? Cryptozoologist's eyes grow wide. Yeah, there was nothing in the trap. No locusts, no phasmid. No locusts? No phasmid either? That's not ideal, but... He rubs his chin. The empty trap was the one at your campsite. Maybe this factors into it somehow? I definitely left that one stocked. Hmm. Right from the campsite? Just means the Insial Indian Phasmid is even more clever than we thought. The old woman's face lights up. Of course, more clever. The detective whispers to himself, enough of this, Kimmy. <laughs> You're dealing with a subject near and dear to their hearts. Yes, exactly. It might behove you to tread lightly. And suggestion is it seems to be really in, t in touch with empathy. I feel like what I was expecting suggestion to be is more what drama is. I think I'm going to put more points into suggestion because this is really, like, you know, insightful. Yes, the Phantasmodea picked off the locust and escaped. This is good news, though we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps, make them more secure. Yeah. Another trip to the reeds. His companion sighs. 
Yeah, that's exactly what it is. What a deft hunter, this phasmid. I don't know, I'm not persuaded. You sure you've exhausted all the other alternative explanations? Ah, uh, let's just placate them. Right, they're gonna... Wait, I don't want to cause friction. We're not really intimately involved with this. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. What a deft hunter, this phasmid. Of course. Be sarcastic. Unless you have an alternative hypothesis you'd like to venture. Mine stands, okay? Hey! Actually, no. Excuse me for getting emotional. This is a big deal for us. I was being sincere. You've helped us twice now. And brought some great news too. My gratitude and the gratitude of the Societe Cryptozoologique de Ravachon is yours. Heartfelt gratitude. But does it feel like closure? What really happened? Some kind of foul play might be afoot. Theft? Thank you, it's an honor. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... He says with a straight face, then turns to us. Helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organization, is it? The lieutenant looks out the window, impatiently. Develop an alternative theory about the missing locusts. But this is a guarantee unless we hit snake eyes. Enthusiastic about the phasmid, something up with the trap, who knows a hooligan. Oh, considered alternatives. All right, let's hit this. Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed, as though shaken. Most likely the hands of a young person, hands small enough to fit inside the trap too. You should ask the red-headed boy, Kuno. There's a chance that the little hooli red-headed hooligan called Kuno might have uh, stolen the locusts. A little hooligan? But what would a child want with bags? Oh, my dear Morel, you've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. A shadow of worry passes over the woman's face. I'll talk to the little gremlin and see if anything comes up. Delinquents, my favorite. Does it sound like it's really his favorite? Yeah, I gathered that. Oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please let us know whatever you turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. Well... I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play suzerainty, but no more field trips for me. Man turns to his companions. After this is your last chance to talk to Gary. Okay. Really, Gary? We're getting somewhere here. I'd love to play suzerainty, but... The woman's voice is a little shaky suddenly. Lena, I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here. Leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it. Even if it's bugs. He looks at his tea. Morel, it's been fun. Really. But I need a bath and I have deliveries to handle. When this tea is done, I gotta run. No, no. No need to apologize, Geary. You'd be more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's rain tea today, though. We're gonna follow this through. He keeps the language unemotional, but it's in there. Disappointment. All right, we'll talk to Gary in a sec. All right, Gary. Always a pleasure to see an officer of the law. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I mean, officers. Oh. oh I guess you could pursue that the other stuff here rather than back at the traps. All right, guys. Um. Yeah, I'm going to leave that episode there. We, uh, we sung karaoke and it was glorious. It was absolutely glorious. I hope we can maybe do it again at some point so that we can sing to a packed house. That would be lovely. Maybe we get a confidence boost or something and we can do it again. Um, our character builds coming together a bit better. Sabre fair, composure, suggestion, empathy looking quite nice. Backed up by some decent volition and Inland Empire. Perception is still quite strong. Um, I'm... You know, visual calculus there. I'm, I've, I'm a bit unsure with drama now. Um, I think I'd maybe prefer rhetoric. I might not put another point into drama unless I absolutely have to. Conceptualization might be nice, but I'm going to stick to my mains 
because we've got so many points that we could potentially put into them. And uh, one more to max out Sovereign Fair as well. So, all right. We'll leave it there, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Leave me a thumbs up if you did. Just remember, everybody, never trust an on-crate. See you back in the whirling.